Welcome to my channel guys. If you like my videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and like this video. In this video, I'm going to talk about four categories, cool, warm, opaque, and transparent. Why do we have these categories in the first place? And why should we label our paint as, you know, cool, warm, transparent, or opaque? Because we need to be smart when we are painting in oil or acrylic. In order to create the 3D vision, this illusion that things are in perspective, some of them are receding and some of them are coming forward, we need to play with the warmth and coolness of the colors. And also we need to know if they're opaque or transparent. So the first step we're going to do is to label our paint as opaque or transparent or cool or warm and in order to do that I prepared a chart for you if you want to find this chart it's in the description part and by looking at that chart now we are going to label our paint if it's warm and transparent like this you can say WT if it's cool and transparent then like this for Prussian blue then you can say CT. Sometimes they are neutral, which is very rare, and titanium white is one of them. If it's neutral and opaque, then you can add an O, like a no. Those kind of labeling that we're gonna do now by looking at this chart. Prussian blue, cool, transparent. Now we have our paints labeled and what are we going to do with these again cool colors tend to move away from our eyes whereas the warm colors kind of move forward and in order to create this illusion we need to use the respective paint for that let's say you have a red wall and in front of that red wall you have a figure with a red dress so you have the background red and you have the foreground red and how are you going to create the 3D look? In order to create that dress needs to be in the front, moving forward to us, we need to choose a cooler shade of red for the background, whereas we need to pick a warmer shade of red for the dress. If you pick a cooler shade for the dress, and a warmer shade for the wall is going to look awkward to your eyes it's going to look like the wall is going to swallow the dress or something like that okay the first step is done now i want to show you how you can organize your palette if you organize your palette according to the coolness and warmth of the colors you will never have hesitation about oh which one was cool which one was warm which one was transparent or opaque what should I do now? Then you don't have to get confused once you get used to this. As you see, I laid out all the colors as cool colors here and warm colors here. This is going to remind me, okay, this is for the background and this is for the foreground or closer to me. And you can see that transparent colors seems like they are a little bit more darker in color. This is how you can recognize it. Also, if you, for example, take a piece of this and, you know, make this, you see that it's pretty transparent. But when you go to the opaque one, let's do this one, you see that it's not as transparent. And this is another way of understanding how you can describe opaque versus transparent. Now I want to show you the difference between a cool shade and the warm shade and how it makes a difference. If you see one of them is receding or one of them is coming more forward. And for that I'm going to take this two similar green shades and let's see what happens. So I'm gonna have a little bit of this here. And This is cool, transparent. Now I'm taking the warm one, I'm adding some oil as well too. Okay. The value wise, I think they are very similar. Let me add a little bit more. Yeah, I think it's good now. So when you look at this, what do you see? Which one looks closer to you? Which one looks more away from you? This is how I clean my brush, by the way. I clean it in the mineral spirits 
and I'm using this Echo House one. It's pretty good. It's um, a medium strength solvent in its hypoallergenic formula. It's safe and I'm very allergic person. I have asthma as well, so that's great for me. And after I dip my brush, I go and clean it in my cut and rag. That's it. Okay. Close the lid. Okay. Keep it near me. Now the red. This is the cool red. So what do you think? Which one looks closer to you? Which one looks receding? This one is receding, right? This one is kind of closer to you. So, and then from far, you can see that kind of very clearly. That's good, that's amazing. Now, you know the importance of cool and warm. And as transparent colors and opaque colors, again, in the first layer, if you do the transparent layer, you're gonna get a very first layer beautifully laid out and then when you go in the details with your opaque layers then it's going to complete whole painting and the depths will be perfect do you remember my dress example with the wall this is what i'm talking about if you you know create the wall with this kind of red and then the dress with this kind of red then you will have a better painting it's going to look more 3d right it's going to have more realistic effect on on the viewer this was it for today but in my next video we are going to start a painting in baroque style wow you will say like baroque style i love baroque times so hopefully you're gonna enjoy it as much as i do and we will use this theory that we laid out today and you will see how it plays out in our painting if you are a beginner in oil painting and if you wonder about the supplies or the basic techniques you're at the very beginning then don't worry these videos will help you i'll see you in my next video